Imagine, if you will, the blob, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, and Halloween 3, which is a good movie, by the way, and I will hear no bad words against it. Having said that, it should have never been called Halloween. It should have been called Season of the Witch. But I digress. Imagine if all those movies were put together, what you would get is the stuff. The Stuff is a 1985 sci-fi horror film directed by Larry Cohen. At face value, The Stuff may seem like a rehash of The Blob, but the only thing the two share is that the main antagonist is a shapeless mass that threatens the world. Except this time, in The Stuff, it's pseudo ice cream. Stuff. An old man finds some white stuff bubbling out of the ground that looks like ice cream. He then decides to put it in his mouth. And oddly enough, he likes the way it tastes. Tastes real good. Tasty. Sweet. If you found some white stuff bubbling out of the ground, would your first thought be to put it in your mouth? Mine wouldn't be. But you know what? That old man did. And now he's a millionaire. So who's the real idiot? You know, this stuff keeps bubbling out of the ground like this. There might be enough of it here that we could sell to people. Some undefined time later, the stuff has become a huge over-the-night sensation aided by an intense PR campaign headed up by a woman called Nicole. Executives for Big Ice Cream are concerned about their future livelihood and ability to compete with the stuff. The seemingly unstoppable force that is the stuff has been buying up dessert companies and converting them to sell their product. Due to its mysterious origins and unprecedented success, executives for Big Ice Cream uh, decide to meet up with David Moe Rutherford, an FBI reject. David Moe Rutherford, now an industrial saboteur, is hired to find out what the stuff is and destroy it. A subplot is that of Jason, who sees the stuff moving in his refrigerator one night. He then attempts to warn his family and others that the stuff is bad. He is later arrested for destroying numerous cartons of the stuff at a grocery store. A news article written about the incident attracts the attention of David Moe Rutherford. The two join forces, and with the now remorseful Nicole, they attempt to discover what exactly the stuff is and to shut it down. I can understand if you're a little hesitant to watch a movie about killer pseudo ice cream. That's a, a valid concern, and I totally get it, but it's actually a good movie. An equally absurd sounding movie would be Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. Um, but I didn't really like that movie very much. So I guess bringing that one up really didn't help my point any. So let's, let's just forget I brought that up. As odd as it may sound, Stuff is actually a good movie. And I don't mean that in the so bad it's good sense either. It's just a genuinely good movie. The best actor is by far Michael Moriarty playing David Moe Rutherford. Michael actually has several good horror films to his credit. He did Troll, Return to Satan's Lot, and Cue the Winged Serpent. By the way, I'm about to blow your mind. Michael Moriarty played the original Harry Potter back in 1986 in a little movie called Troll. <laughs> uh, my name is Harry Potter. Nice to meet you, Porter. Uh, no, Potter. Uh, and I review books. So Harry Potter existed way before J.K. Rowling wrote any of her Harry Potter books. Back to the stuff. I just love the way Michael Moriarty played the role of David Moe Rutherford. He has a subtle, dry sense of humor, which I loved. Hey, what was it hanging out back there? Uh, you gonna arrest me for indecent exposure? And just the right amount of 
arrogance and smugness that is perfect for his character. That's a sweaty palm. That's two sweaty palms. Let me feel you. Ah, that's another sweaty palm. Yes, sir. Hello, sweaty palms. Andrea Macaroni. I know I'm saying that last name wrong, but I don't know where to start with pronouncing her last name. Plays Nicole, who is David's love interest, but she's actually much more than that. She's actually a pretty important person and a strong character in this movie. Evidently, she is responsible for the success of the stuff. Never enough, enough is never enough of the stuff. Mm, the stuff, the taste that makes you hungry for more. She invented the PR campaign that created the stuff's image and won over the public's approval. Just by looking at her body of work, it's hard to imagine how she did anything for the stuff other than send it straight into bankruptcy. It's called the stuff. And believe me, enough is never enough. For a movie about pseudo killer ice cream that uh, comes from deep within the earth, it's actually got a pretty good little story behind it. The stuff is just as relevant now as it ever was. It has a timely message. It's, um, it's a cautionary tale, really. The stuff could be a metaphor for many things. It could be a medication that hasn't been properly tested yet. Or it could be the junk food that is preying on our society's laziness. Then again, I could be reading way too much into it. It's probably the latter. I like to think there's a bigger message to this scene right here other than just some random product placement. It's also fast paced and never boring. The first act and half of the second are my favorite. That's when the main characters are trying to find out what the stuff is and where it came from. The stuff has several very good special effects. The way the stuff works, it enters a human or an animal's body and uses them as a host as it eats them from the inside. As it eats the host, it uses the host's body as a shell to hide in as it lives among everyone. If the stuff leaves the host's body, all that's left behind is an empty shell that crumbles upon impact. There are several scenes of the stuff leaving a host's body in a violent and painful manner. One scene in particular stands out near the end that is the most violent. If you watch it, it will haunt your dreams. It, it's truly disturbing. All the shots of the stuff leaving the host's body and the empty host's body crumbling all look great. And they were all done with makeup and uh, prosthetics. This just helps to prove that CGI does not have to be the end all of special effects. Practical effects still have a place. To add more scale to the stuff and to make it appear much larger, they use some uh, miniature sets. I always like to see the use of miniatures in movies. It's uh, something that's not done very much nowadays and that kind of stuff is usually just left up to CGI now. There's a uh, one scene where they used a room that could rotate. The stuff throws a person against the wall and that person slides up the wall to the ceiling, seemingly defying gravity. It's the same effect and probably the same set that was used in a Nightmare on Elm Street. If you sit down and watch the stuff, you know very quickly you're watching an 80s movie. It's in the fashion, it's in the music, it's in the colors, and it's also in something that I just don't know how to quantify. I just really enjoy the atmosphere of watching a movie that was filmed in the 80s. A big part of this movie is the branding of the stuff. It was cool to see the 80s styled advertising playing such a major role in this movie. It reminded me of when I was a kid watching all those ridiculous commercials that tried to brainwash me into buying their crap. I really like the reoccurring use of uh, neon lights in this movie. I'm not sure the use of neon lights are particularly 80s or not, but they were visually appealing and made for some interesting lighting. The most notable uses of the neon lights was in the, uh, the Stuff logo, which was used a couple of times, and the uh, motel scene. The uh, neon lighting of the motel scene helped create an eerie mood 
that wouldn't have really been there otherwise. Enough is never enough. Enough is never enough of the stuff. The stuff. Let's talk about Jason, the kid. I'm not really sure what his point is. He doesn't really do anything to move the story along. It just seems like he's kind of there and in the way most of the time. I would compare him to Batman's Robin. In the way and always getting in trouble. But for one big exception, Robin actually has some skills. Nunchuck skills, bow hunting skills, computer hacking skills. Girls only want boyfriends who have great skills. His acting wasn't all that great either. I would compare him to Josh from Troll 2. That may seem a little harsh, but unfortunately it's true. I kind of just threw up in your car. I know. I'm sorry. I mean, That's all I just right. ate shaving cream. Everybody has to eat shaving cream once in a while. At one point, Nicole decides she no longer wants to represent the stuff. And she actually expresses guilt over having made the stuff what it has become. It would be helpful if it was explained why she had this change of heart and decides to help David uncover the truth of what the stuff is. As it is, it just comes off as extremely convenient. There's another scene where I would like to know what her thought process was. So check this out. Some of the stuff gets on David's face and begins to smother him. So what do you do? Grab the stuff firmly and pull it off of David's face. Pour flammable oil on the stuff which is on David's face and ignite it. She chose the latter, but luckily the stuff was attached to a stunt double's face. I hope you don't mind my bringing my male secretary Roger along. He's so creative. That seems like an odd and sexist thing to say. Is she saying that to clear up any doubt that he is not a woman? If he is a woman, he has clearly nearly been beaten to death with an ugly stick. As the second act ends, the tone of the movie takes a shift and it becomes more of what I would call a comedy. To me, it's not for the better and it just seems really out of place. They go to this character for help and this character is just way too over the top. It looks like they were trying to increase the scope of this movie and make it appear much bigger than it could really afford. And in the end, all they achieved was just a, a dip in quality, in my opinion. They really seem to rush to the ending like a mad dash to the finish line. It's almost like once it's revealed what the stuff is, the filmmakers just don't know what to do next. They then go this really absurd route and things just continue to go downhill from there. When it does get to the ending, it's, it's very anticlimactic and the ending is almost off screen and just kind of hinted at. The filmmakers really could have learned something from watching Halloween 3, which had a fantastic ending and the story is nearly identical to this one. One of the bigger questions I have is regarding the timeline of the stuff. How much time passed from when the stuff was found in the ground to when it got into supermarkets. Maybe when the stuff too comes out, they'll address that mystery. I'd actually uh, quite like to see that. I'm sure Hollywood's working on it. If they're not, they should. Also, when the movie starts, how long has the stuff been available? Has it been out days? Weeks? Months? I just have to know. Why would you not tell me this? If the stuff just came out, and we're seeing day one, it would create much more of a sense of urgency. As the movie is, it seems like the stuff's been out for quite some time, which uh, really doesn't make any sense. Because it seems like once you eat the stuff once, it takes control of you. If the stuff is as popular as this movie makes it out to be, it seems like it would have already taken over the world. We see the stuff a lot in this movie. And depending on what the stuff is doing in the scene, depends on what the stuff is made out of. For example, in one scene, the stuff could be ice cream getting eaten by someone, and in another scene, the stuff could be the, the foam coming out of a fire extinguisher being blasted at someone. So, the stuff really doesn't have a consistent look all the way throughout. 
To be honest, that really didn't bother me, but I just thought I'd bring that up. That it, it, the look is a little inconsistent. Let's just say they did make a stuff remake. This is one instance where I think CGI would be a good thing. If the stuff was made out of CGI, I think it would look good. The stuff isn't a walking, breathing character, and so it wouldn't come across as obviously fake. I love it when there's an animal on screen that's supposed to be threatening, but the animal just won't cooperate. Then in an attempt to correct the situation, angry animal sounds are just overdubbed. What you're left with is the paradox, such as a cute, docile looking dog with angry barking and growling thrown in there. They'll be retiring me. <laughs> and uh, I understand that you were uh, part of the team that I got a tree for you. It doesn't quite sell the effect. I'm happy to report that there are several movie errors, such as Boom Mike and Cast a Crew being visible. Uh, but in the stuff's defense, they're only reflections. Taking the wrong turn off here somewhere. Uh, this is Stater, isn't it? The intent. I got no proof at all, and that's why I got to go with the fa to the factory with you tonight. This is Colonel Malcolm Gromit Spears. Enough, I have never misliked never you. Of the stuff. The stuff. If you owned a multi-million-dollar operation and were attempting world domination, would you use this person as your spokesman? I didn't think there was anything that I liked better than ice cream. Now I'm a big girl, and I've decided there's something I like better. No offense to her, I'm sure she's a lovely woman, but I think they could do just a little bit better. Recall when the stuff got on David's face, and Nicole thought the best course of action would be to ignite the stuff while it was still on his face? Later in the movie, the tables are turned, and Nicole gets some of the stuff on her face. So, what do you think she does to get the stuff off of her face. I'm gonna give you three choices. You tell me which one you think it is. Nothing. It just disappears in the next scene. Let David grab it with his bare hands and rip it off her face. She sticks her head in the oven and bakes it off. I'm not gonna tell you what it is. You, you gotta watch the movie to find out what happens. So if I had to give the stuff a movie grade, a zero out of five, I would give the stuff a four. I feel like that's a, uh, a good, a good honest grade for the stuff.